Hey folks, Mike McGee here. As you see, I've got some big old turkey legs. Legs, thighs, wings, back, and neck. This morning I went hunting and I got this big old boy. I did not have my camera. I did not have my tripod. I did not have a cameraman. And I know some of you are gonna be upset about that, but I couldn't help it. I just didn't feel like it. I don't know what I felt like, but no, I didn't do it. Now for a few of y'all follow me on Facebook and you've seen within an hour, or before an hour was up even, you've seen my turkey. I posted these pictures here and I was pretty happy with it. It's a late season bird. The season ended the very next day after I killed it. So late season bird, even though he was a big old bird, he had lost a lot of weight. He didn't weigh that much. In my first video where I did the turkey hunt, I actually went through how that so many people throw this exact cuts out. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, where's your breast meat, Michael? Well, it's in the freezer. We save that for special occasions. In the comments of that video, I got so many good suggestions on things I could do with this. Of course, in that video, I cooked them and showed you something good to do with it, but several comments really resonated with me about making a dish with this that I really like, and that is chicken pot pie with turkey. Now, this neck, you can't hardly get chunks out of it. The best thing to do with this neck is going to be to cook it whole and then eat it off the bone. So we're going to lay it here. The back is about the same way. I've already pretty much, when I cut these thighs out, I took the meat right off of there. That would be, let's see, that would be right there. I, I got that off then. I'm gonna put that up here. Your wings have a lot of good meat, and it's pretty white meat. Obviously, the thighs are where it's at. No leader bones, no nothing. It's pure, it's big, it's easy to cut up, and I'll show you in just a second. The legs on these big old birds, my, my, my. They've got these leaders in there. Pure bone. Pretty much a pure bone. And so... We'll, we'll mess with that. I'm not gonna cut that up on camera. What I'm, I'm gonna put these wings up here for now. I'm gonna put this leg thigh up here for now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to do this thigh meat in real time. And then the rest of this bird, I'm going to cut up on a time lapse to make it look easy and fast, but it'll be slow. Now there's your debone thigh right there, and there's a little bit more I still have to clean up there. Now the first thing you're gonna do, you need to clean it up. It's got this heavy sinewy exterior. We're just gonna slide, we're gonna fillet that off. Just like that, because that's nothing but bad. So now we have our cleaned meat in a pot pie. I kid you not, you don't want big chunks of meat in a pot pie. Now I'm just doing muscle separation right here. In order to get the cube size that I like, I'm gonna cut it like this. And remember, this meat is not gonna shrink. When it cooks, it is not, not, N-O-T, not gonna shrink. Take those, lay them like this, and just dice them the same size this way. And I would say I'm doing about half inch to quarter inch squares. And as you see, I'm doing a bunch at a time. I'm not doing one little old thing at a time. It'd take forever, it'd take all day. That's not what we want. We want to get it done. And so I'm just gonna repeat that on all these individual muscles and we'll have the first thigh complete. And the way we're gonna cook this is low and slow because this meat tends to be a little on the tougher side. We're gonna cook it low and slow. I just finished eating my lunch today and here I am already worried about supper. And the reason is, if you don't get on with it, you're gonna have meat that you can't hardly chew up. So we want it tender, we want it flavorful. We'll get into the flavor aspect here after a while. If you don't have yourself one of these Victoria Knox six inch boning knives. My, 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 my. 
They have made my life so good. And I'm not going to shout out the guy that gave them to me because that's why he gave it to me. Oh, Longbow Banjo. What a fine fella. If he was doing this, he'd already be finished. That guy can cut meat like nothing you ever seen in your life. He probably wouldn't even cut his fingers off like me either. Oh, and if you want one of these knives, just look down in the descriptions of this video and I'll have a link for you and you can just go straight there and get it and you can have it purchased before this video's over. All right, we are just about done with the first thigh. Now you see that didn't take all that long and I'm gonna turn you on a time lapse right now and we'll finish dicing this meat up and once the meat's diced up, we are gonna get to cooking. All right, we got it cut up. I'm gonna use a big enough pot to cook this neck. I want that neck. Now, you can see the different colors of meat. That is the beauty of these turkeys, almost like turtle in a way. You got really dark, really light meat. It's beautiful. What we're gonna do is just pour it in. That is quite a good pile for what it was. I'm just gonna take salt, coarse salt, Salt it like that. Now we're just gonna cover this with water. We're gonna put it on the stove and we're gonna just boil it for several hours until it's tender. I don't know how long, don't even ask, until it's tender. All right, you're gonna be right there on this stove right here. There's one thing that'll make water boil and that is fire. I'm gonna walk away, got some other things to do, but when this gets tender, I'll be right here with you. All right, you folks recently seen me put 150 pounds of seed, seed potatoes in the ground. And that was actually the total of 200 because I did 50 pounds in February. And people can't believe I put out so many. It's because I want to have potatoes year round and not be depending on a store for them. And so that's why I grow so many. These here are what you saw us dig last year. We grew these in between the corn rows. There was another experiment. Around here, it's one experiment after the next. So right now we're dicing up these taters and carrots while the meat's cooking. All right, I went ahead and diced these up. Actually, I didn't dice the carrots, but I diced the potatoes. Uh, what we wanna do, we wanna put them in water on the stove, get them cooking. And eh, you don't wanna cook them to death because you don't want them to be just mush in your pot pie. So we're just gonna put them in, oops. And throw the lid on that and I'll show you this meat. It is boiling really good, and it's actually just about ready. Yeah, it's ready. So, but I've got the neck in there, so I'm going to let it just continue to boil. It can't do nothing but get better. We'll let this cook, and then we'll start putting this whole pie together. All right, folks, I think we've got everything ready here. I'm gonna put this neck over in your plate, okay, Caleb? Now it's very hot, but it's fall off the bone tender. Now we've got our meat. I didn't measure the meat. I just cut up all the legs, thighs, back, wings, everything. I put the heart in there. So anyway, we've got our taters. Didn't really measure that either. Just sort of diced it up small. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, you don't have to measure the only reason to even need to measure is to make sure it's going to fit in your pan when you get done and it don't matter because we got two of them i'm gonna go up i'm gonna go ahead and pour it all together here's my taters and carrots 
As you know, pot pie has peas in it. I've never been huge on peas, but I'll eat absolutely anything, whether I'm huge on it or not. Now, cream of mushroom soup. We're gonna do one full, big, one pound, 10 ounce. This is 26 ounces. Nice big old bunch. And then I'm gonna take some of this broth from the turkey, pour in there. Not just a whole lot, but enough. And now, before I stir it together, I'm gonna throw some herbs and citrus seasoning in there, black pepper in there. Black pepper is just a beauty when it comes to this kind of dish. So I kind of like a lot of black pepper in mine. Salt. I salted the meat, nothing else got salted, so I'm just gonna open this bad boy up and just, I don't like the stuff to be so salty. You can't stand it, but enough salt for the potatoes and carrots basically is what we're dealing with. And of course, it wouldn't be right not to have some camp dog sprinkled in on that. And once we get that all took care of, we are gonna start stirring. And for that, I've got a big old spoon here. Now, if it looks like it's not it's got enough moisture, we've got plenty of broth on hand for just this purpose. Wow, we, wow, we, plenty of moisture in my opinion. And what I like is a meaty. I want it to be meaty. What you got here is meaty. What do you think, Caleb? Wow, we, and I don't think I forgot anything. We're mixed, we're ready to go. Now that's just how quick and easy it is, folks. Sometimes on YouTube, stuff seems slow, and so we have to speed stuff up. But that's real time, folks. I'm telling you, that's unbelievable. And we're just gonna pour some in, just kind of divide it up between these two pans, I guess, because it's too much for one. So we're just gonna, Pour it in there. And here we go. Could have had a little bit more to fill these two pans up, couldn't we, John? Uh, get a potato bopper. You know what? I think we're going to consolidate. I think our eyes is bigger than our pans. Let's just consolidate. See, that's what you can do when you fly by the seat of your pants as much as I do. You're lucky if you got any seat of your pants left, but that's how we roll around here. The dishwasher won't mind. Frank. <laughs> All right. That fit good. Now we're going to throw our dough in on it. Now for this dough, we're not going to do a rolled out dough. We're going to do a blob it and drop it <laughs> like drop biscuits we're just gonna do a blop and drop here and there and everywhere basically biscuits is what we're making on top of this and I hope I don't get whipped for the way I do it, but there wasn't enough biscuit dough for two pans anyway, in my opinion, so I'm glad we're getting it all on one. The question is, is one pan enough for the boys? I mean, if we had it in two pans, they might feel a little better about it. One pan, even though it's the exact same amount, one pan may not suffice. What do you think, Caleb? Do you think one pound will get it? Probably. One thing about that dark meat on a turkey is very filling. Now I drop some on my pants. And the more filling it is, the less it takes to fill you up. What do you think, Caleb? Am I doing it okay? Mm -hmm. I tell you, I, I already feel like I'm not a professional at this, but 
Paper's going to laugh and say, you ain't a professional at nothing, McGee. That's why we watch you. All right. All right. I've got a hot oven out there. Wood burning cook stove. I'm going to take and throw this in there real quick. We're going to brown the biscuits and we're going to get the boys all in here and we're going to eat. This oven is unbelievably hot. Oh my goodness. That'll be done in no time flat. I'm glad everything in it is completely cooked and ready to eat. So all that has to be done is the biscuit on top. That's going to be done in just like minutes. My mouth's watering. Hey, Mom, it's real brown on one side. Uh, it's pretty brown on that side. Okay, I'm gonna give it like half a minute. All right, boys, she's done. Time to come out. Mm. Oh, is it ever hot on my arms? Yep, she's done. Reckon you heard that? All right, everybody, let's eat. Mm. Yeah. Okay, pass your plate. Got a lot of turkey meat in it. <laughs> Joe. That is very hearty. Hearty, hearty. Hearty or hearty. Boy, that's some good looking dough. <laughs> Uh, you want some, Mary? You feel like it? That's good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you want some filling? Amen. Good job. All right. Oh boy, let's dig in. David, you got the big turkey neck. We want to see a little bit of turkey neck action going on down there. Joe, that's yours. Hmm. Is it if you poke it and it gobbles, you know I didn't cook it enough. Matt, do you like it? Mm-hmm. It's good. Mary, do you think I seasoned it properly? Yeah. Tastes wet, right? Good. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody that responded in the last video and made positive comments about the fact that we should be saving this meat and not throwing it out. That is a fairly big problem. And because of you speaking positive words, I didn't get a bunch of negative comments. I only got one guy saying, if you'd give me your address, I'd when he would send it all to you or something like that, which I would have given him my address if I believe he'd send it to me, but you know he wouldn't. But anyway, I want to say a huge thank you to McKenna Watts for this shirt and for being my lucky shirt. On today, Friday the 13th, we made it a very unlucky day for one big old gobbler. We're going to get on out of here, folks. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video. What's so funny? Huh? I can't eat new video. <laughs> what about now? Is it still on? Mm -hmm. <laughs>